I'm done with the chakra. I'm done with that. all people. I'm done with the chakra. Like, uh, we just got to start over. All of those people. Honey, we've had our conversation. Man. But we really do. Like, I think that's what. The, I, th- I honestly right. think that's what's going to happen. I think that. I think that everybody's kind of feeling that. Not everybody. I just need a lot of 15 minutes if you were skinny and it'll all be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, we'll be okay. Tim Collins is on there from the, from the education. We need to get together and talk about the 40th anniversary of that. I think we should all go to D. Or can we send it February 24th? February 24th? I thought it was January. No, it's Friday night, February 24th. Yeah, Yeah, it does. Well, because it's like the week before. If you do, uh, we can talk about that. Um, this morning, and if anybody has an interest, let me know so we make sure we have the have the tickets. Good morning. It's uh, ten o'clock on December the seventh, and I will call the uh, quarterly meeting of the Education Broadcasting Authority to order. We do have a quorum present. Uh, we have, um, as you can see on the screen behind me. Uh, three members attending uh, virtually, that is Tim Consett, Taylor Hood, and Nancy White. Um, we have here at the table a number of members of the authority, and I will start with my left and ask Mike to identify themselves. First, I will say uh, I'm Bill File, and I'm the chairman of the EBA. So, Mike? Mike Farrell, uh, member and vice chair of the EBA. Uh, Greg Thomas. Thanks, Greg. Daniel Walt. Frank Wood. Randall Reed Smith. Carol Rotruck. Butch Antolini. Christina executive Dodd. Director. Oh, sorry. Christina Dodd. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, we'll follow the agenda that was previously uh, presented to each member of the authority in advance. Uh, the first order of the agenda will be the approval of minutes. So moved. Yeah, and dispense with the reading of them. And, and that is for both the uh, the June and the rules. Uh, excuse me. That that's for the June and the September meetings. Yeah. What two different motions? All but so move on that one too. Okay. Right. Second, second. <laughs> all in favor of both motions? Uh, aye, aye, aye. All opposed, likewise. The ayes have it. Um, next item would be the EBA financials. We have Tammy Treadway uh, here with us this morning. Tammy. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Tammy. You should have this financial report. Mm-hmm. This is for the month ending October 31st. Um, we didn't have time to get November ready. I will see that we had one of the uh, main members of our staff who had been with us for 11 years, Stephen Grindstaff. He resigned and left in October. So we've had some turnover and we're having major training in business right now to teach people how to pay bills through oasis and so forth so <laughs> anyone that's familiar with oasis knows what an ordeal that can be so. um we'll start with the federal funds that those are the funds received from the fcc reimbursement our cpb grant we should receive that this month and it will be approximately 1.2 million dollars um, in our state funds, you'll see that last year we had drawn down a little more than we had this time last year, and that's because we had some remaining funds for capital purchases from a 2018 appropriation. Um, underwriting shows that it's down just a little bit, but I believe that's just the timing of the contracts and the billing. Um, I think Marilyn can tell you underwriting has increased from where we were last year as far as the contracts. And, of course, you'll see that that membership has increased from this time last year. Um, When you look at other income, grants and leases, um, we're down a bit there, but that's because of the timing of our uh, MACP grant. We received, we have a new grant for 800,000, and last year we received 400,000 of that, and this year we received 300,000 of that. When you look at the expenses, you'll see, of course, our largest expense is our salary and benefits. And that's increased slightly because we are now fully staffed. And last year we were down by 10 to 12 employees, I believe, in October. Um, Our contract and professional services, those are a lot of um, things to do with legal services and our FCC attorneys and our FCC engineers for our repack. 
I'm sure Tyler will tell you when he gets up that we're almost <coughs> finished with that. Um, lease and rental is one that <clears throat> I looked at and saw how much it had increased, but a lot of that had to do with the Dolly Parton event. We had to rent a satellite truck and some other things for that. Um, you'll see that travel's increased, and of course that's due to everybody going back to conferences after COVID, all the conferences are back in person now. And repairs and alterations has also increased, and that's due to the fact that we had many problems with deferred maintenance and we've been spending more money on, on buying things and fixing things. So are there any questions? Any questions of the damage? Don't hear any damage, so okay. I thank you for that. Okay. What we'd like to do next, Tammy, um, if you could speak to us briefly about the audit. Uh, we got the 2021 audit uh, report back. Yes. I believe that's been uh, forwarded to each <laughs> member of the authority. Yes. If anybody, any, any member of the authority had any questions they would like to ask Tammy, and we have a representative of the company that performed the audit uh, here today also to speak. Yes, it was the 22. Um, FY22 audit, and um, we do have some of the same findings, although I'll tell you, and I hope Kelly will tell you, we, we had a great improvement from where we were the prior year. Um, this is our third year, I think, with, with Sutherland Stallmaker. It's, it's a big difference from the audit firm we had before. Um, what we found was basically the firm we had for the previous nine years before Settle came on is that they really weren't even doing an audit. They were basically just signing off on everything. And um, there were some problems with some other state agencies that they audited and, and the Department of Administration came in and said, we just don't wanna use them anymore. <clears throat> so um, we have um, begun to change the way we do some, some things when we close the book, some accruals and, and things like that. And uh, one of our problems we'd had in the past was with leases leases have always been sort of um, a problem because there was never really a staff member that kind of took ownership of the leases. They've been bounced around from one department and one person to another. A lot of the documents are really old. Some of them, some of the documents we have going back to the 80s and, you know, some of these leases go out for 30 years and, uh, you know, the cell phone companies have changed names like 10 times since the original lease. So it, it has been something that has been a problem, but um, one of the uh, ladies in my department, Christy Fitzgerald, she's really taken that on and spent a lot of time trying to get all that together. And, you know, Kelly may tell you that there was a new GASB relating to leases that we had to implement this year. So the so leases have been a, a big focus. So. Would, would Kelly like to to address us briefly. Yes, this is Kelly Schaefer with Settle and Stallmaker. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll just make a few comments regarding the audit report. I know you all have received a copy and hopefully um, have had a chance to look over the two documents that we issued, audited financial statements and the report to the authority. Um, and then I'll open it up for any questions that anyone may have. Um, so just a couple things that I want to point out on the financial statements. Your financial statements were issued on October 13th this year, which was in advance of the October 15th deadline established by the state of West Virginia. So your financial statements were issued timely. Um, and then you received an unmodified opinion on your audit, or what's commonly referred to as a clean opinion. That's the best opinion that you can receive for your audit. So really, um, from an overall perspective in terms of results of the audit, that's what you're looking for is that unmodified opinion. Um, there was one finding reported related to internal control and there were no compliance issues noted um, during the audit. As Tammy mentioned, there was that new GASB um, that was required to be implemented this year that was a statewide requirement. Um, it was GASB 87 dealing with leases. As Tammy said, that required um, us and management to really dig into the leases and, and look at all the agreements and everything. Um, so some things came to light there, as Tammy mentioned. Um, but just kind of big picture what that GASB did is any leases that were previously considered operating leases that just run through the income statement as expense, those are now required to be recorded on your balance sheet as a right to use asset and then a lease liability. 
and then conversely on the opposite side where you're the lessor for leases, you have to put a lease receivable on the books as well. Um, for the most part, on the balance sheet, those, those items kind of net out to zero almost, um, and then the payments still run through the income statement. But that was a pretty big change statewide that, um, that showed up this year in the financial statements. If you'd like more information on that, um, it is all those changes are kind of summarized in note two to the financial statements on page 25. Um, so those are really the big picture things for the financial statements. And then the report to the authority just includes communications that we as your independent auditors are required to make to the board. Um, that includes things like um, noting that we had no disagreements with management during the audit, no difficulties in performing the audit. So you know, really nothing of consequence there. And then we had just a few comments included in that report um, or suggestions that um, we saw during the audit process that maybe you could improve some of your internal processes and Tammy touched on a few of those as well. So that really um, kind of summarizes the things that I wanted to touch on and would be happy to take any questions if the board has any questions. Does anyone on the authority have any questions of Kelly regarding the audit? Kelly, when you say you've made suggestions, are these mandatory compliance issues for the state of West Virginia or just a better way of doing things? They are not mandatory compliance issues. It's just things that we noted as we were going through the audit process that could maybe provide some efficiencies or um, improve some of the documentation that's maintained. So they are suggestions. Thank you. Does anyone else have any, any questions or any comments? Mr. File, if I not could. Um, Oh, absolutely. Please, Nancy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just looking through, you know, a lot of those adjusted, um, adjusting journal entries that you had to complete. And I know we had problems with that before because uh, Tammy and I, I think she reported that last year in the auditor. Um, so I'm glad that we are on a better track in doing that. So she's going to be able to do most of the accruals throughout the year that she needs to do so that these won't. Um, there won't be so many at the end, end of year? Yes, I believe Tammy's been working on that. Um, I will say, as Tammy mentioned, um, things went much better this year. We had a reduction in the number of entries, still a little more than we would like to see, but it was definitely a significant reduction from last year, so that was great to see the progress that has been made. I think Tammy's continuing well, having to work on that. Having had to work under Gasby myself, I understand how, how those things change and how many entries there are at your end. So um, good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Anyone else, uh, including those uh, attending virtually, have any comments or questions? If not, well, thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you for being here and <laughs> thank you for all the effort you put into this uh, you. this year's audit. Look forward to seeing you next year. <laughs> next item on the agenda will be the Friends of West Virginia Public Broadcasting, Brian Gallagher. Hey, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Brian. <clears throat> In the spirit of this being Pearl Harbor Day, a date that will have for me, I don't want to contribute to that, so I'll be brief. <laughs> uh, we've, we're Prior to the next meeting that we have, the friends have, we've asked our new committees to have organizational meetings so that they can get started and work to support staff and, and um, get ourselves better educated about how the organization functions. Um, we've had a number of 10% requests. And in addition, we try to do what we can to, to support the organization. Obviously, the highlights of those are we continue to support staff education, as Tammy alluded to. A lot of people have been able to go to meetings. The friends have been able to fund some of those. Um, we've been able to help uh, buy some additional items to help um, Christy do her work to bolster membership and uh, outreach to the community. We wanted, we've done some things to let staff know that they're appreciated. Uh, we've funded uh, gift cards, and unfortunately, after much discussion at our executive committee meeting, uh, the Ethics Act only allows us to give $25 gift cards to everyone. So there's a lot of discussion about that. So what we decided to do in addition to that was to fund two catered um, meals for staff at all three locations. Uh, we got additional funding to facilitate Mountain Stage. They're going to be going to the Kennedy Center again. So hats off to 
Adam, I'm sure you'll hear more about that. And one of the cool things that I wish it was my idea, but it's not my idea, we're going to fund a pilot for a um, thing that's being called the 304 pilot. And uh, as Butch described it to our meeting, if you have anybody seen uh, Todd from Daryl's house, Daryl Hall, where they have, they have artists come in and they do an interview process, the whole thing. So we're going to do that for West Virginia artists. Oh. We're going to bring them in and we're going to have this pilot. If it's successful, then which feels confident that we can get funding to fund it going forward. The friends won't have to fund that. So we, that's the highlights of the 10% request. We had a positive response to the picnic and the fleeces that we gave, and I think that that uh, staff was appreciative that we were able to do that. And coming up this weekend is the 30th edition of Joy to the World. I'm planning on being there. I hope to see some of you all there, too. Bob Thompson. Other questions? I'm just curious, uh, what is it that you have to fund for them to go to the Kennedy Center? The Kennedy Travel. Center? Oh, they, oh they, okay. In order to get there, all the, okay. All right. And thank you for doing that. Oh, absolutely. It's a very good thing for not just the organization, but for the state, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's a really a elite thing. So we're happy to do our little part, sure. Other questions? Anybody have any questions, uh, Brian? Anybody uh, <laughs> attending remotely, do all have any questions? If not, thank you, Brian. We appreciate you and the group's efforts. Uh, it certainly made a difference. Absolutely. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the West Virginia Public Broadcasting Foundation report. Uh, today will be the report from Mike Farrell, the new chairman. He and, he and Ted, Ted Arnbrack uh, switched positions. Ted is now the vice chair. That was at Ted's request and approved by the foundation board at our last meeting, following the EBA meeting. So, uh, Mike, we welcome you as the new chairman of the foundation. Thank you. Mike is vice chair of the EBA. Well, the foundation is, is doing better than the stock market. <laughs> uh, I got a report yesterday. I'll let you uh, share that with this group. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Radio and TV uh, endowed funds are up 66,000 since our last report. Uh, the portfolios were down 13% the last meeting, but now they're down just 11.5%. So that's a, they've recouped 1.5%. And with the market down 16%, our portfolio is doing pretty well. We're doing the rollovers on the CDs. Uh, for the short term, because the Fed is targeting another rate increase, a quarter to a half percent, uh, we are going to stay the course. We move from mortgage-backed securities to Treasury inflation protected securities, and we moved 100,000 at the September meeting, and as a result, we did 6% or better. So there, um, it's coming along. Thank you. Americo, could you uh, tell the board what we've been doing? I've had the opportunity to sign lots of contracts that you sent my way, but uh, give us the status of our projects uh, with our various uh, outside entities that help us so much. Sure. Uh, uh, okay, so in the grants world, our overall grant activity uh, date is uh, 465000 uh, This is... 300,000 anticipated uh, MACP installment for folk waves uh, and 115,000 in new grant activity, uh, which I'll go over. And then we do have a uh, $150,000 grant in the pipeline, just awaiting um, a decision from Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation. Uh, so for, for the MACP folk waves, we have release 20 stories, or we will release 20 stories by the end of this year. Uh, we did have a uh, retreat for our reporters at uh, Chief Logan uh, State Park. Really nice venue. Uh, I would say they were very well priced and great accommodations. Uh, so this was a chance, uh, really, in I think two years for all the reporters to meet in person, receive training, you know, make connections that you can only make in person. I really would say the energy of Folk Waves Tour is really intact, really good, uh, really motivated uh, to the point where we are going to do this again uh, in the springtime. 
Uh, you know, we have varying levels of experience uh, within uh, folkways reporters. Some have been in the uh, business for, for many years and bringing a lot of experience with them. And uh, some people, uh, some reporters, uh, not so much. So we have a system in place to help those who need a little bit more training. And that is the exact idea of the program and the way that Max T wants to see it. So uh, we're doing really well there. Uh, also, uh, you know, pretty much every meeting I've been updating you on our uh, marketing activity with Studio Mesh. Uh, we actually closed that agreement uh, last month, uh, but we have, during that time, added 5,000 followers, 36,000 views, uh, 14,000 uh, page visits, which resulted in uh, 51,000 podcast downloads for Inside Apple Hatch and Coldplay. So, really good return on the investment for that uh, to the point that I want to continue our relationship with Studio Mesh and uh, throughout 2023, uh, even expand uh, some of our outreach in other areas. They get us, they understand our culture, they understand the program, and I feel very comfortable continuing that relationship with them. Um, so, uh, in other areas, I've been working uh, with, with Maggie for many months now in the education department. This is the Greater Canal Valley Foundation grant for early learning. Uh, we want to pilot this in Boone County. Uh, we have been before their uh, review committee, uh, and really we're just we're just waiting for that to come to the and also another component uh, in the education realm with uh, the MACP grant is a, we have educators throughout the state that build curriculum that is based around folkway stories. So we are going to roll out in uh, early this year middle school and then following that by high school curriculum. That is pushed out on our website and also uh, PBS Learning Media. Uh, so it gives us a lot of good presence. Uh, uh, out there. Um, other grant activity, uh, so to this, so this gentleman here, uh, we, uh, with the Benedum Foundation, have been approved just yesterday, so my report that you're reading probably isn't as accurate. That did come through 55000 for Mountain Stage to help us get a, a bigger ticket X in our area here. And, you know, I, I want to just thank everybody I work with because I don't do this in a vacuum. Uh, he and I were on the phone sometimes at 11 o'clock at night making sure we get things correct for the grant application. Uh, same thing with, you know, Maggie and everybody else I interact with. It's very much a team effort. Uh, and um, I just want to thank everybody for that. Uh, these applications are very well received and very thorough because, you know, of our teamwork and putting these together. Um, in the Us and Them uh, series, I have two grants. Uh, one is from the West Virginia Humanities Council for 30000 That was approved, uh, I believe, in September, October. Uh, and that will help us uh, begin with uh, Season 9 of Us and Them. Uh, we also have a new uh, grant, grantor we're working with, uh, called the Just Trust. They have also awarded us $30,000. Uh, for us and then season nine uh, episodes they're going to focus on criminal justice uh, reform throughout the area, particularly West Virginia. Uh, so really it's just uh, I was hoping to hear something from Greater Kamal Valley Foundation before our meeting today, but uh, hopefully within the next few days uh, I should have an answer for that. So overall we're, we're, we're looking really good, but I, I really want to be bringing in new New grants to you in our next meeting. I want to extend on behalf of the board uh, our appreciation and thanks for your hard work. I think the Benedum grant is a big step in the right direction. They have uh, lots of influence and lots of money. And if we can show them that we're a good investment, that becomes a source that will renew itself uh, time and time and time again. So uh, I was very pleased to get that note. Uh, yesterday, and uh, um, you know, Kanawha Valley is not as fast as the people in Pittsburgh, obviously, right? <laughs> Good deal, Mr. Chairman. That's our report. Thank you, Mike. Does anyone have any questions uh, regarding the report? 
regarding the foundation in particular. If not, we appreciate it. Uh, next, we'll move into old business. Um, I don't have any old business. Does anybody have any old business they would like to bring up? And if not, we'll move into new business. Um, actually, I don't believe I have any new business. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just have an asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be some action items if it's new. But, um, <laughs> if, did you want me to report? Well, I think mean, that would be a great <laughs> um We're working, or we have been working on, uh, we had a little bit of a stall on the 40th anniversary event, but we have done a proposal for the friends that will be presented to them, I think, within the next couple of weeks uh, for, some, for some initial seed money to get started. Uh, people that are interested in being part of the planning process, our next meeting is going to be, it is the 20th of December. Um, it will be here at 8.30 in the morning. Um, we're hoping to finalize details <laughs> on that day. We are looking at uh, a couple different dates in September, uh, but zeroing in on September 27th. And uh, we'll follow up after that. Okay. Uh, that was a report from Danielle Waltz, who is chairing our anniversary, our 40th anniversary uh, meeting, our, our celebration. <clears throat> something we're all looking forward to. How is your committee? Do you have a substantial? The committee's been great. We've been I, I, been great. I mean, but it, we would always love, I mean, I think that when the time comes uh, and we'll have a process for it, uh, you know, getting people to come to the event and getting and raising money for the event is going to be what's important. <clears> and that will be, you know, not just our committee, but, you know, we'll want help from everybody to the extent that people are willing. Very much appreciated. But it's hard to believe it's been 40 years from out stage, but it's been a tremendous 40 years. And we appreciate what you're doing with it, Danielle, and uh, certainly appreciate Adam and everyone else involved. So, uh, with that, is there any, any matter, any other matter you want to bring up in a new business? If not, Bush, we'll ask for your executive director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to everyone. Uh, glad you're here at 600 Capitol Street today. Uh, we're going to go into the department head reports here, but before I get started with that, I did want to mention that late um, late last Thursday afternoon, um, the longest serving employee uh, at West Virginia Public Broadcasting, and that's a John Nakashima, um, a senior video producer in Morgantown, uh, informed us and informed the state retirement board that after 47 years of dedicated and award-winning um, job performance at West Virginia Public Broadcasting, he's going to retire. And his retirement date is December the 30th. Um, I invited John to come to the board meeting today. We have a, a nice plaque for him in recognition of his service. Um, and he declined the option, but I wanted to let everybody know um, we're, 53 years plus, right? And John's been with us for, for 47. So um, he's the longest serving employee, and I would imagine that that's a distinction that will uh, that he will always have. So, um, but I wanted to mention that uh, before we get started with the department head reports, and I'm going to go to that immediately. So um, Tyler Garner, our chief engineer. Um, Tyler, if you would get up and um, uh, let the board know what you've been doing. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you all for coming. Um, for the past seven, eight months, uh, we've been in an analysis and planning mode for engineering and IT, and we've been very busy in that. Um, we're wrapping up that stage and looking to actually move into the fixing all of the stuff we have analyzed over the past <laughs> six to seven months. A um, couple big highlights that I'll give you guys. Uh, as you know, we've been in the middle of a repack now for quite a while. Uh, we have five sites left over to complete uh, towards the end of December here as our tolling waiver comes to a close. If the weather holds out, we will make it uh, by the 15th. If not, we'll get a couple days extension. At this point, we are running into the towers freezing up um, at a lot of our locations. They sit above 3,500 feet. 3,500 square feet. Oh, sorry, uh, 3,500 feet above sea level. Uh, so 
temperatures get a lot colder up there a lot quicker. Um, so with the weather, hopefully we will wrap things up here shortly. We've already completed two of the five sites in a very short amount of time since uh, I was made aware of the situation we were in. And the SEC has been very gracious in allowing us to continue this repack uh, and working with us along with our group of SEC lawyers. Very helpful. Uh, I do have to point out uh, Art, our senior engineer, has been absolutely instrumental in pulling this off in the northern sector. Uh, he has kept together uh, engineering as a whole uh, until I came along. And uh, hats off to him for making this possible because it would not be possible without him. Uh, Kurt has also been a major uh, help up in the sector as well as we complete these. Uh, so hopefully we will finish the last three in the next two weeks. The next time you come, I can tell you that it's all completed and we will begin looking forward, uh, which I'm very excited to look in that direction instead of looking behind us. Uh, so we've got a couple of big plans, uh, one of them being our Cooper's Rock location, which is our main broadcasting tower for WNPD up in the north. Uh, it's going to go through a full remodel starting here in the spring, and I look forward to getting that completed as we tackle all 30 of our transmitter sites across the state. Uh, we do have a fairly large set of towers for PBS um, in the nation, so it is quite an undertaking, but I'm excited to complete that so that we can start looking at other ways to serve the um, on the IT On the IT side of things, we have been in planning now for a couple months uh, to restructure the entire back end of the system. Uh, that will begin in the spring as we begin to order equipment for that, uh, which will improve our reliability across the state and set us up for the next five to 10 years. Those are just a few highlights. I have pages and pages of more. Uh, if you'd like to sit down and talk, I'd be happy to do so at any point. So that's my report. Questions for Tyler? Thank you, sir. Chris Barnhart. Uh, is our Mr. director Annalini, I was just going to, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm a little slow on the uptake when I unmute, but I was going to ask about the uh, copper thefts. I, I would assume since he didn't say anything about that, that we've kind of gotten beyond that. Uh, my hope is that we've gotten past that. Uh, Garfield has been, uh, has finished its phase one, which was uh, securing and reinstalling the copper uh, and putting in uh, deterrence. Uh, those seem to have worked as of this moment. I haven't checked my cameras yet, so uh, today, but uh, so far things are looking well. Um, we plan to replicate a lot of things we've learned at that site across the rest of the site. Uh, because we are emergency services, we do provide uh, part of that. Uh, it is important that these sites are secure, and as a lot of these sites are in the middle of nowhere, uh, they can invite some attention from uh, certain groups that we don't want. And so our group, our goal is to put in deterrence at all of these locations over the next year uh, so that by the end of 2023, we will not need to worry about that. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Anything else for Tyler? Thank you. Chris Barnhart? is our director of video production. And Chris has finally gotten settled in, I do believe, after arriving in mid-July. And um, Chris? Uh, good morning. Um, since our last meeting, I'm um, pleased to announce that we have released uh, three documentaries. Our uh, community schools project, uh, Falls, Prince of Falls, uh, Blue Demons, uh, Western Legacy, about the uh, North Fork High School basketball team and their seven consecutive championships. And uh, Finding Day Ripple, representing an artist by John Nakashima, who, as you've heard, is retiring at the end of this year. Um, we've also filled three of our four openings, which are now two openings because of John Nakashima's retirement. And we hired on an extra part-timer to help the lottery, which allows us to free up um, some of our day producers from not having to pull us at night. We are looking forward to working with the uh, news department on the upcoming TLT programming. Um, and we have a slate of new uh, documentaries we're about to start production on this month and next month to uh, 
have a new uh, range of releases starting in the, the middle of the year. Um, things are looking up we, where we are getting a, a gel together team, um, a lot of new guys on the team who are who are <coughs> and getting into the position they need to be into, and the uh, the, the old guard being very uh, uh, helpful to them and training them up and them ready to go. Uh, we also brought in two uh, specialists to train up on uh, editing and <coughs> A lot of going on to uh, to shoot up our, our our team. Any questions for Chris? Okay. Liz McCormick is our webmaster and digital content coordinator, and um, she's got good news, folks, this morning. So, Liz. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Um, so. The new web build has been going beautifully. We are launching on January 23rd with a new website. Um, Digital Relativity has been wonderful to work with. Um, as of on October 31st, we've been working, excuse me, we've been working uh, very closely with them and WVPB's digital department has been working diligent, diligently to provide them with all of the specific content requests that they, that they have asked for <coughs> on October 31st. We um, delivered um, a large uh, a quantity of content items for them, more than 200 specific items that they had requested. We met their deadline in full. And so at this point now, we are working with them to provide any additional content requests, any needs, you know, that as, arise, um, as they arise as they're working through um, the website. And it looks beautiful. And January 23rd is our launch. Um, also in the digital department, um, Americo mentioned our, our partnership with Studio Mesh. That has been going great. As he said, in November, we completed our first phase partnership with them on the hashtag Focus Future social media campaign. That campaign resulted in we created an Instagram account for our podcast, Inside Appalachia. And just to give you a little context, when we launched that account at the end of July, um, we were had about you know 20 followers there to start. And we, this morning, have more than 7,200 followers on this account. Um, and MacP has been an incredible support for this growth. And also, one other perspective for that, on November 20th, I had reported out we had 5,000 followers on that Instagram account. And so that was November 20th, and this morning, 7,200. So people love Inside Appalachia, and the majority of the age group that is on our Instagram for Inside Appalachia are between the ages of 25 and 34. So we've got younger people who are really interested in Inside Appalachia. Um, additional updates, um, I, uh, we're going into the second phase with Studio Mesh as well, and that's to grow our Inside Appalachia podcast. Um, and that will be, we haven't, we've only had one meeting so far on that, but I think that's gonna be looking really well. Um, I have loved working with Studio Mesh. They have been an incredible partner. Um, and then other things in digital, I work regularly with, um, on a daily basis with our news department. Um, I work with education pretty frequently, with production. Um, and uh, we, uh, I recently with news, I helped them on election day. We had a live blog. I worked with our reporters throughout the day very closely to get our photos, their photos as they talked with voters on our social media accounts, quotes from them. We had the live blog running um, with photos, quotes, stories as they were out talking with voters. And then getting up with TLT, I'll be in a supportive role there too, um, mm -hmm. in digital to help them get their stories out in that capacity. And my hope is actually, as we're going into this new TLT season, in this new role, that I can grow our online audience for TLT this year and see what that might look like. And the last update I have for you, um, we are getting close. I came, in I came in near the end of a grant with the West Virginia Water Trails Project. And um, as of just last week, I completed an interactive map for this. This was completing part of the grant. Um, this just takes you, visitors that go to this map to four of the locations that are featured in this West Virginia Water Trails project. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is um, it's a, it's a, a, an in-depth look at um, our southern West Virginia water trails and what we're doing to um, what that, the communities down there are doing to help um, them grow. And this, this is made possible in part from the National Coal Heritage Area Authority. And I think that's it from digital. Thank you very much. Yes. Does, does the web rebuild, does that include the app too or not? The app is actually, it's not. So the app is something separate, but that is also something I'm going to be looking at um, in the spring. 
to kind of revamp. Will it be easier to find stories that you've heard? <laughs> Yeah. On the website? Yeah. Yes, very much so. Good. Yes. I don't have to call me earlier. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Marilyn DeVita, uh, our development director. Uh, Marilyn is going to give you um, the development report and um, during that, Christy Mori will be talking to you about uh, marketing. So, Marilyn? Yes. Um, we're seeing what I call a usual contraction when we have tough economic times. Our smaller donors, you know, make decisions for their household. But uh, even though we may have fewer donors, our money is up from last year because we have other donors who are increasing uh, and uh, they have more capacity. So uh, for their monthly giving, and um, our Giving Tuesday was up. It was a small campaign, TV pledge, small uptick. So those are the good things. And uh, I have Kathleen, who was the membership manager, still segmenting that database because that's our power and who responds to what. And so that's what we're looking at. Um, Chocolate Challenge, January 25th to February 6th. Mark your calendar and the February, March direct mail campaign will also include additional gifts, laps, and donors and acquisition letters to folks who've never given to us. And I want to say that we are <clears throat> on track to meet our FY23 goal. And that's a good news. We're looking ahead for where we were last year. For underwriting uh, this quarter, CAMC and Marshall Health renewed their Appalachian Health News sponsorship which is good news. We had one non-renewal, but uh, the team has made up for that non-renewal in some smaller business contracts, so that's good. Um, next quarter, it's uh, Bailey Glasser for Mountain Stage, Dutch Miller Subaru on radio, and Bowles Rice on radio and TV. So those are not insignificant contracts, but they're working on them. Um, but they feel confident they're going to meet their FY23 goal, and I learned from Butch last night, who um, treated us to what I can say was an authentic <laughs> rigatoni in meatballs. I know I, my husband is a first-generation Sicilian descent, so yes, it was real. But they feel confident they're going to meet their f <clears throat> So, And I'd like to also thank the friends again because they have really made it possible with all the swag and everything else for Christy, who has done a wonderful job to get out and press the flesh and the public. And they are funding uh, uh, things that the education department and that uh, Christy uses, and Christy keeps that stock. So I'll turn it over to Christy. Sure. Thank you, Marilyn, and yeah, thanks to the friends, because if I look at what I do weekly, if it weren't for the friends, <laughs> I'd be a lot slower. <laughs> so um, yeah, we have a, a lot to be thankful for. So I came on board in May, and so this data is really from June to uh, the end of December, but we've completed 15 events around the state. Um, and so we're really proud of that, but we've got a lot of work to do. We're gonna be a lot busier next year. Um, and so moving forward, we'll be publishing a quarterly calendar that we'll share with you, um, just kind of break it into Q1 through Q4 so you can see where we are and what we'll be doing. And then, of course, on the new website, um, Liz will be managing a calendar that will be easily accessible to everyone, so you'll know where to find us. Um, we attended Bridge Day this year, which their numbers say 140,000, and I think Eddie and I can attest that it was every bit of 140,000 people. <laughs> so, um, and of course, that's not to say we touched every one of those people, but we touched a yeah. lot of people. Um, and that's just one. I know that this year, most all the events we attended, it was the first time they had had an in-person event since 2019. And I think we should all take a lot of pride in that we were part of that. Really, it's a, it's a rebuilding year and a comeback year. So we're looking forward to next year. Um, 
also uh, within our department, um, you know, we had um, an offsite meeting. We were charged with really working on collaboration between our, our teams and our departments here within the building. And I feel like we've done that. So um, we meet uh, regularly, weekly with the Mountain Stage team to support them. Um, we've been at every Mountain Stage event um, with a West Virginia Public Broadcasting Cable. Um, and uh, Eddie is always there too, and we answer questions. Um, and, and that's really a big part of it. So a lot of times, you know, you may think like, well, you're just talking, you're preaching to the choir. But a lot of those folks have questions because a lot of us still watch public television um, over the air. And those are folks that we can move into sustaining roles and move them on to passport and really let them know what they're missing. And so we, we talk to a lot of people um, in that capacity. Um, also collaborating with the um, production team, we're going to be meeting monthly. So how we can better support and promote those West Virginia, um, West Virginia programs. Um, and then also just working daily with membership um, and underwriting, and then also supporting the Folkways team. So as we look at the, at the suite of events for next year that the Friends will help make possible, we're going to look at segmenting say, so we know who uh, what events are really good for folkways, what events that we need membership and underwriting events, um, and so how we can uh, spread the wealth. So, thank you. Any questions for Prissy? Marilyn, did you have anything else? Okay. Um, I'd like to um, I'd like to have uh, our education director, uh, Maggie Hawley, talk to you. Uh, Christy's been out on those events, but um, we probably don't have a better representative um, to the general public right now than we do with Maggie and the education team. Um, they've been um, everywhere, and, and that's not an exaggeration. And it has really um, amped up um, uh, the... Uh, the education department's efforts across the state, and it's been very well received. And she's she's got a full schedule, yeah. and is now having to turn to the to the internet to fulfill a lot of those things. But uh, I, I come in, and in and lots of times the doorway is dark in Maggie's office because she's out. Um, you know, uh, with her, her very small team and, and they're out um, advancing uh, education across the state of West Virginia. And um, I would like for her to talk to you. I think it's a good segue. You know, Christy's been out for that, that direct marketing piece, but, but Maggie is out there representing um, West Virginia Public Broadcasting as well. So Maggie? I go to my, uh, well, good morning, everybody. I go to my... Uh, front door at my house. My husband's like, who are you? <laughs> so on all the time. I've, I've only been home one time this week, which was last <laughs> night. Uh, and the food was wonderful, but I was exhausted because I didn't get home and it was going on 9 o'clock last night. But we were here and having a great collaboration here. Um, but I came here from Greenbrier. Um, so, yes, very busy, but it's wonderful work, and I get the pleasure to work with all of these amazing people. I'm coming up on a year. Can you believe that it's gone <laughs> that fast? It's it been... feels like yesterday that I just started, but it has been an honor and a pleasure, and I get to tell people I have the best job <laughs> in the world. Um, I love it every day. So just to, I could go on and on and on about all the things that we do because it is the best, but I just highlighted a couple things. He's like, pick three, so I'll pick this one. <laughs> uh, we have presented at numerous statewide conferences, including the West Virginia Library Association, the West Virginia Reading Association, and then where we just came back from, which was the West Virginia Principals Association. Several of those presentations that we gave, it was standing room only. There was people, it was completely packed, and there were people standing in the back. Um, and we were able to get out there and get that word out there of what it is that we do and what we offer to people, which was fantastic. And thank you to the friends. Christy, give me all of this stuff that we can give away and all of these resources um, to share with people. So that has been fantastic. 
Um, we received a grant through Maryland Public Television where we brought the History Alive program into local high schools. We then um, associated with those uh, local high schools. We collaborated with Glenville State and West Virginia State to um, premiere two documentaries on the lives of Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman. And so we were able to bring that into West Virginia and we were able to connect high school students in with those colleges. <clears throat> we also did a writing and an art contest with that theme of um, visions of freedom. And those documentaries were so powerful and then getting to connect that to that actress of Harriet Tubman. And it's interesting when you get to see high schoolers wanting to take a photo with the Harriet Tubman actress, you know, normally they're just more into their phones, but you could hear a pin drop in those auditoriums of the high school because she was just so engaging. Um, we provided through that grant um, books and like a whole kit for the high schools and the universities all on Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman. And they asked us to come back um, for Black History Month with the same kind of activities. Uh, it was just a great program. We were so lucky. We were one of 10 in the nation to get that through Maryland Public Television. So um, we, we had a wonderful time and made great relationships with those universities and with those high schools. So that was a lovely um, program that we were able to do. Was that Western Maryland or where, where were you doing that? Um, it was out of like Maryland, PBS. the high schools and stuff. Oh, oh no, it was our local um, high school. So oh, okay. We did, I'm sorry. Um, Gilmer I'm County, sorry. South Charleston, St. Albans, Riverside, Capital. Um, so we we chose okay. specific ones um, to do that out mm -hmm. of. But when we do stuff this coming February, um, we're going to expand that out. Now that we have access to the documentaries we can do more high schools than just those. So that was kind of like a pilot thing um, for just that specific grant. But it went so well, now we can do it everywhere. <laughs> Maryland Public Television paid us. Okay, I was yeah, confused. Was, yeah, and, <laughs> and it was, those, it, you heard about, okay. yeah, you heard about the high school. Right. Um, and those those two things, were those two events were done in conjunction with uh, West Virginia State and okay. Glenville State, so. Uh, whenever, so we watched the documentaries and then we had a discussion panel afterward with people from the class and the community um, to discuss the lives of those individuals and it was, it was just beautifully done. It was great conversation and um, it was just great. Uh, and then last but not least, we had a very successful Read for the Record event. My goal was to have no books left. We ordered um, cases of these Read for the Record books from Jumpstart. We had 250 books. That was, our goal was to get them out. Because in past years, we ha I had cases of, of these books left that I would give out on like various um, goodie bags and stuff. I didn't want any books left. We wanted to make sure we get those in classrooms, get these in the hands of kids. And we met our goal. We had no books left. Um, all the books were mailed out all across the state. Um, our data shows that um, people went out and read to over 9,430 students across the state on that day. So um, we're still getting some people turning in their after some, uh, survey, but from what they told us before of how many kids they expected to read to, that was the number that we got. So no books left, they all got mailed out and that was a really great event for us. Thank you, Maggie. Eric Douglas is our news director and um, right around the corner, the, the, uh, the legislative session is, is about to, uh, to begin um, in just about a month now and uh, we're geared up and ready to go uh, for the return of the legislature today uh, to five days a week. And uh, Eric and his team have been working very hard, and, and um, we have secured a host, and I'm going to let him give you the details. All right, fair enough. I, I didn't know if you had already uh, talked about that or if you want, to, want me to do that. 
So um, just since the last time I spoke to you, I was talking about we were preparing a series of on tourism around the state, not not beauty tourism, but issues with tourism and, and how it's changing West Virginia and, and what we need to still do. That ended up airing in early October. It was a series of nine stories that are all grouped together on our website if you want to go back and see any of those. But I think we actually had some really good looks at whether it was housing issues for people who work in the tourism industry because houses are all being taken up by Airbnbs for people coming in. It's those sorts of issues. I think it was a really, really good look. But So that entered in early October. Then we went from that straight into interim sessions with the legislature, then to the election, another interim session, and we just completed two more days of interim meetings at the legislature. So it's been a busy couple of months. That's kind of the that's what we're paid to do, so that's fine. Um, uh, as uh, uh, Butch mentioned, we're, we are ramping up for the legislature today. One thing that we do, working with Suzanne, working with Chris and his department, is produce some packages, some early stories that will air in the early days of the legislature today, five, six minutes, on various issues that we anticipate will come up during the legislative session. So my guys have already been out working with, with, with the videographers producing those stories. We have to have all those wrapped up this month to air in the early days of the legislative session. Uh, the state of the state is January 11th, and then we kick off uh, the legislature today in, in early January, right after that. Um, uh, as, as Butch said, Bob Runner is now going to be the host of the show. We're bringing him in. Looking forward to working with him. I, I've met Bob several times over the years, but uh, uh, he'll be in, in our discussions. Looking forward to him being basically the studio host, and then he'll be tossing back and forth to our reporters and, and them doing interviews with uh, legislators and that sort of thing. So looking forward to a pretty dynamic show. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention to you, uh, we just hired, as of two days ago, we, we brought in the our Appalachia Health News reporter. That, that role has been vacant since June left or left back in June. She moved on to, uh, to the uh, APM show uh, 1A as a producer for them, but uh, the staff, the rest of the news team has been sort of filling in the, the gaps and doing health stories, but... We are proud to say that Emily Rice has joined us. Uh, she's got a great background, young young reporter, but got a great le load of experience already and looking forward to working with her uh, to, to keep focusing on Appalachia Health News. Pretty much all I wanted to talk about, if there's anything else, any other questions, I'll be happy to. Okay, thank you, Eric, appreciate it. Adam Harris is our executive producer of mountain stage and um, uh, I'm sure you're sleepy and you can tell everybody why um, he wasn't at the meeting last night folks he didn't he he missed out on the Rigatonian meatball so Adam I did get a nice fresh lobster roll in Boston which was really nice oh too bad you have that going for us yeah thank you we sold out Boston 1125 seats wow and ticket prices were 40 60 80 and 90 dollars so it makes me thankful to be back in Charleston. Every trip is a great trip, but the best trip is the trip back home. <laughs> uh, we hadn't been to Boston since 2007, and I look forward to going back in maybe another 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, 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 the Kennedy Center was mentioned. It hasn't been made public yet. We're actually announcing that December 13th, so that'll be coming out next uh, week. We'll make that official. Uh, Joy to the World is coming up next Thursday and Friday, live and in person, but we also have the broadcast dates of last year's shows. Those will be getting pushed out in the next week or so. Um, so the television and radio broadcast of that is coming up. Uh, we've had, you know, a lot of great success with underwriting, thanks to Todd Freimeyer and his department. Um, they just brought in 15 grand from Diversified Energy a couple months ago, and then as I understand, we've got another underwriter coming on in January from AARP of West Virginia. So... Uh, really great to have so much interest in our underwriting. Um, Marilyn and Kathleen have been helping us keep the Mountain Stage membership <laughs> bolstered and hopefully growing. Uh, so we continue to do more as, as much as we can to diversify the sources of revenue that we bring in. And then thanks again to Americo for securing that Benetton Foundation to help uh, pay for artists. That's going to be 
hugely helpful, and I hope I already have a good lead on somebody we're going to help spend some of that money with uh, in the first part of next year. Uh, we do rely on the friends, though, a lot for our marketing efforts and for uh, our help with our fundraising event. And so I hope the friends will continue to give us that consideration. Mountain Sage doesn't have a built-in marketing budget, um, and I think that marketing and getting the word out to people beyond our airwaves on radio and television is going to be more important now than ever before. We have to diversify the ways we get our word out there to our audiences, Mountain Sage and public broadcasting. Uh, just got some spraying ratings numbers while we were sitting here, so you guys are the first ones to hear this. Our annual or our weekly listenership is 216,500 people every week, and that's on 294 stations. Uh, that number of stations is up 24% over two years ago and 36% over five years ago. Up 36%, and that's great for us. The same report says that overall NPR listening excluding newscasts is down 20 percent so that speaks to the same point i was going to is that we have we can't rely on our own airwaves to market and produce and promote ourselves it's got to be beyond those airwaves so we can help bring people hopefully back into the listenership fold and I'll, the other thing i'll say from that uh, report is that our top five markets and this is completely uh appropriate and ironic our, our number one market in the last spring rating was boston uh <laughs> top market was boston followed by philadelphia omaha birmingham and Bangor, Maine. Oh my God. And we got a letter during the show from a woman in the audience that said, I hope you'll come to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to be able to tell her that they're our top five market right now. So. Do you have to pay all your travel expenses? Like, yeah, uh, well, every time? I mean, so it's a, it's a deal. Every time we go anywhere, it's a deal. Like, when we go to Morgantown, places closer by, they usually provide the lodging. Right. Some of these further places out of town, especially if we have to do two nights lodging for 25 people, you know, that can get costly. And yeah. so we either arrange for a lodging mm -hmm. buyout. Um, uh, that's, that's usually the best case. Is they, they arrange to pay us to buy off the rooms, and then we negotiate with the artists to let them provide their own rooms. And, like in a Boston or a D.C., that's the easiest thing, versus mm -hmm. us try to book it ourselves and pay for it. Plus, it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to tell you what our rate is at the Marriott in downtown. But that, mm -hmm. that ain't the rate we got in Boston. <laughs> so, I mean, lodging is affordable here. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Charleston. <laughs> we have a beautiful venue. <laughs> Uh, five dressing rooms. This place in Boston had two dressing rooms. You know, I mean, it was it was a hassle, and that's why I joked about coming back in 15 years. I might forget about all this and, and <laughs> when you go back. Any questions for Adam? Thank you so much, and I hope you get some sleep, <laughs> or hope you've slept on the way back. That's a long bus ride, long folks. Time. So. Okay, uh, Americo, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Well, I gave up the yeah, I think you. I think you. I, I think you. I think you. I think you. I think you got called on first, and you weren't. You didn't yeah. know that was coming, did you? I mean, so. I'm not going to add anything. I just I want to let uh, everybody know that uh, I've worked a lot of different environments, both in the private and public sector, and this team is is awesome. Uh, very transparent, very helpful. Each and every one of you sitting here, uh, if I ever have a question, if I ever need support, if I ever uh, need additional details, everybody here uh, goes uh, the extra mile to, to help out to put these grants together uh, in, in a way that, uh, you know, ACT especially, like, I almost give them too much information, too much accuracy because of the support I have from the team here. So, and of course for the board as well. So I just want to take a moment to, to say that. So thank, you. thank you. Thank um, you. Our chief operating officer and programming director, Eddie Eisen. Yeah, I didn't forget about oh, okay. you. I'd say, <laughs> you know, you know, it's the best for last, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I mean, the big thing that we're doing in radio and TV, and I think Adam touched on it right there when he told you all that ratings overall across the nation are down because people are transitioning to the way they view and listen in different ways, you know, beyond broadcast and to digital. And that's, that's part of the reason for that. And we continue in radio and TV to, to transition ourselves here. We've got everything in place. We have one final thing that we need to do, and we're very close to that. We already provide podcasts for all our local programs for people to download on their own time. We have a live stream of our radio broadcast that we already provide. 
and we already provide on-demand viewing, but the thing that we're still lacking that we're getting ready to turn on with, within a few months is a live stream of our TV broadcast. And that will go live probably in the next three months. We finally finished the infrastructure in place at the Network Operations Center in Beckley. And that way people can do the on-demand, but they can also watch a live stream of our TV broadcast as well. So that's the big thing. And um, someone said during conversations, it, you know, we're in a really unique position in that we have a legacy uh, service that we have to continue with our towers and stuff because here in West Virginia, broadband is behind and a lot of people still rely on that broadcast, but we have a startup with digital that we have to keep, you know, abreast of. And um, Butch and I uh, were on a call with some people from Congress just this week talking about rural communities and the service that, that that public broadcasting pays to them. And we would talk about these issues in particular, you know, the fact that we have to keep this very expensive infrastructure going and continue working toward broadband in order to continue to deliver the content that is so important to the citizens of West Virginia. And that's really the only thing I really had to talk about today. Okay. Don't sit down. Oh. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Eddie, first of all? There is a screening Sunday. Um, it, during the past year, um, I've had the opportunity to go to a couple of national events, the PBS general managers meeting, and then uh, the National uh, Educational Telecommunications Association meeting in September. And Eddie has, has uh, had the opportunity to go to the um, to PRPD, which is the public radio program directors meeting um, uh, in, uh, in New Orleans back in August. And I think it's very important that, uh, and I reported this to the executive committee of the Friends last week, but I want to report it to the board today that, you know, we are, um, we're confronted with a situation with the way viewership is going and the way digital is coming on board. We're, we're being confronted with a very um, serious situation when it comes to fundraising. And, you know, Maryland reported we're, you know, we're going to hit the goal and everything. But I, I think probably, um, you know, look, NPR and PBS um, are, have uh, gravitated um, to the point where they're concerned about themselves and not us. And I think that's the best way to describe that. And uh, Marilyn can tell you clearly, um, and I believe I'm correct about this, our single largest donor, correct? Um, our single largest donor whose, whose contribution to public broadcasting over the last several years has been $50,000 annually, okay? Um, that donor uh, this year, we got 20000 and NPR got 30,000 and they're coming in and it's, it's eating the young, if you will. I mean, um, they're targeting our donors um, and it's a big issue. And as you go and sit in these national uh, meetings where they're out there, you know, I've had a lot of discussion with folks from uh, smaller operations and smaller states across the country and um, I, I think it's a real concern for those of us, especially the ones that are in the rural setting. And uh, we've, you know, we clearly know and and we're watching our back. But I think it's very important that the, that the authority know, you know, we've got a we've got a challenge on our hands out there. And um, uh, while things are OK right now, we need to make sure that, you know, We've got our back covered, and, and, and I want you to know that as, as things move forward because the dynamic has changed, clearly. The dynamic has changed. And you've been in you've been this, this operation for 26 years. He can give you a lot better perspective on it than I can. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the, I mean it's, it's actually kind of common sense in the way if you look at it. In the past, you know, we affiliated with these organizations because – 
nationally, they needed airways from local stations in order to push the content out. And digital has changed that so much. I mean, so the role of what a local station is is changing dramatically, and it'll continue to change probably before the next five years. Um, so we've got to continue seeing what the role of the local station is. Um, okay. Any questions about that? That's my report, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm glad we ended on a high note. <laughs> 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 it's nice if it's all good news some of the time, but it always is. Right. Well, this that's something we're certainly going to have to continue to keep an eye on, and and I know the executive committee will be discussing that probably every Wednesday morning from now on. Uh, that, that is an issue, and it's been one that's been coming on for a while. It didn't happen overnight, and, but it's got to be addressed. And I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Uh, does anyone have any other uh, matters they'd like to bring up before the authority this morning? What I'm going to do in just a minute is ask for a motion to go into executive session. Um, and I will say right now that we don't anticipate any action when we come out of the executive session, session except to adjourn the meeting. I don't think it'll be a long executive session. Lunch is being provided for all of us who are, who are here, those on the uh, Zoom call. I'm sorry, they're going to miss it. Um, Are you Italian? <laughs> Our next meeting is going to be on March the 1st, uh, which is a Wednesday, 10 o'clock, uh, here in at 600 Capitol Street. Um, and I, I do want to thank Butch for your report and the report of your team. I think it was it was tremendous. There's a lot of a lot of positive uh, energy taking place here, a lot of good occurring, and I appreciate what you all bring to public broadcasting. Uh, you made some great hires over the past year or year and a half, and, and it's certainly starting to show. So we appreciate what everyone is doing to, to advance West Virginia public broadcasting, and, and we do appreciate, Marilyn, your efforts to continue to seek funds and, and your assistance in doing so. It's something so important to the state. We don't want to lose focus on what we're trying to do. It's, uh, of course, with Mountain Stage, that brings it. Uh, that's a great advertising piece for us, and it brings something that no other state has. And we appreciate Adam's efforts and, and, and all the cast there. So uh, with that, uh, if there is nothing else, and of course, we also do appreciate you telling us this morning about John Nagashima, what a great career he has had. Uh, we weren't aware that his retirement was going to occur, obviously short notice, but um, he has been an award-winning uh, employee here, and he will be missed. And we certainly appreciate all the efforts he's put into West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Uh, with that, I will ask... Uh, oh, one yes. second. When's the foundation meeting scheduled to begin? Uh, 1230. Well, we don't need to sit around here for next hour, so why don't we move it up to 11:45 and notify everybody? This is going to be a short executive committee meeting. Should be, and I've got to go back to court uh, this afternoon. So let's start at 11:45. Yes, sir. Okay. That would work well. Um, with that, I will um, will ask for a motion to go into executive session. We're going to discuss personal matters. This will be pursuant to. West Virginia Code 6-9A-4B2A, and there will be no uh, no decisions made, no votes taken in the executive session. When we come out, we will ask for an adjournment uh, of this meeting. So, so moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Nancy, so Tim, and Taylor will give you a call. Okay. okay. We'll call Thank you. you. We'll call you okay. individually. Yes, we're going to turn okay. off the... Portion. Uh, we'll okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, we're gonna, uh, no, it'll be upset. Yep. We're going to stay in here. For, uh, Sir, how are you? <laughs>